farming, fishing, foraging, mining, combat. These are the five skills that live in harmony in the valley. Only the farmer, master of all five skills, can bring economic stability to Pelican Town. Welcome to the beginning of a series of videos. I've done guides before that focus on specific seasons, but looking back on them, they can be really scattered and overwhelming for the average player. Here, we're going to focus on one skill at a time and do a deep dive into everything it has to offer. First, we'll be talking about the overall mechanics of farming. After that, we're going to go over all of the crops. And that's all that this video is going to be because apparently I am not very good at being succinct. When it comes to the next video, we'll be talking about all of the animals and then all of the extra machines and level up rewards that farming has to offer. Also, this is a pretty chunky video, so please use the chapters to get to whichever section you think you need. Let me know if anything in here helped you. Let's get into it. So, the way that I see it, no talking about specific crops or anything is going to be beneficial until we go over the basic mechanics. Alright, so, to plant a crop, first you need to hoe the spot, put down any fertilizer, put in the seeds, and then water it every day until it's ready to harvest. Okay, let's speed it up a bit. You've got two kinds of crops, single harvest and regrowable. Regrowable crops will stay up after the first harvest and will provide more harvests in a shortened amount of time until the crop goes out of season or you just take it out manually. Regrowable crops have a few complexities to them, such as any fertilizers will only affect the first harvest. For instance, speed grow only decreases the initial growth time and quality fertilizer will only increase the quality of the first crop. There are also trellis crops, and the only difference with them is that you can't walk through them, so just don't plant them in a way where you won't be able to reach any of them. Generally, I try to plant them in rows of twos, and that works out pretty well. And to go over different fertilizers really quickly, the fertilizers all increase the quality of your crop. Deluxe fertilizer makes iridium crops possible and normal quality impossible, and if you're at least level 9 with deluxe fertilizer, you'll always have at least gold quality. This is often the best to use on single harvest crops. With speed grow, it increases the growth speed of a crop by 10%, deluxe speed grow by 25%, and hyper speed grow by 33%. Note that in every case, it'll round the amount of days to grow downwards. As an example, let's look at cauliflower. Normally it takes 12 days to grow. If I were to put speed grow on it, that should reduce the days by 1.2 days which normally it'd round up to 11 because that's the closest number. Instead, it's always gonna round down, so now the amount of days to grow is actually 10. In general, speed grow is a somewhat situational choice, being the most useful when you'll get an extra harvest before the end of the season out of it. Lastly, we have retaining soil. This is the simplest of them all. Basic retaining soil has a 33% chance to stay watered overnight, quality retaining soil has a 66% chance, and deluxe retaining soil always stays watered. This is the only fertilizer that will keep working after a regrowing crop has had its first harvest. It works as a great alternative to sprinklers, and it's the only way to keep things watered indoors, since sprinklers are outside only. That ought to do it. So, I'm about to blow your mind here. This is a farming game. As such, crops are a big part of the game. They'll be your main source of income from the beginning, all the way to the end game. It's important that you know all about these, so I made a chart. Yeah, me and my charts. From left to right, this shows you the buy price, how long it takes to grow and regrow if applicable, the sell price, any multipliers here indicate a chance of getting multiple crops from the same harvest, next you have the profit per day, and finally which crops act as loved gifts for the villagers since these gifts can be easily repeated by just growing more crops. The crops are organized in order of availability. For instance, parsnips are the first seeds you obtain, but at the bottom, strawberries can only be gotten on spring 13th at the egg festival, rhubarb is available once the desert is unlocked, and garlic is unlocked at the start of year 2. So the part that you're probably paying attention to right now is the profit per day, but I want to go over every single crop and give you a reason that you should grow it. Too many times we get stuck in a cycle of just planting the one crop that gives the most money, but it's time for a little perspective. Starting with parsnips. With the shortest growing time of any crop in the game, it serves as one of the best ways to make a quick buck. I personally buy parsnips on day one of my playthrough to start making money as soon as possible. It's also required for the spring crops bundle. 
you also need five Gold Stark of the Quality Crops bundle. You'll notice that this bundle only requires three of the four options to be used. However, seeing how Parsnips is the cheapest of these four crops, I definitely recommend using it. Potatoes have a one-fourth chance of providing a double harvest, which in turn makes these have the best gold per day of all of the spring crops sold by Pierre on year one. So this is your springtime moneymaker until the 13th rolls around. It's also required for the spring crops bundle. Moving to Blue Jazz, flower crops have the ability to boost the selling price of honey that is made within five tiles of the flower. Blue Jazz is the best one for spring, increasing the price of honey from 100 gold to 200 gold. Cauliflower has the longest growing time of the season of 12 days. It can serve as a low maintenance crop with the trade-off of having to wait longer to obtain the money. This is also required for the spring crop bundle, and make sure to plant it on day one if you want to get the speed grow reward in time for the strawberries being sold on the 13th. Kale is harvested with a scythe, which is many times faster than picking individually. In addition to that, it gives the best farming experience per day when harvested, being 17 experience or 2.83 experience a day. And your farming levels are very important this early on. Tulips are the cheapest sources of energy in the early game. At normal quality, they provide 45 energy with Eaton, all while only costing 20 gold each. They're also the cheapest option to use in tailoring a skirt, which I had to stretch for the tulip, sorry. Green beans are your only option for a regrowable crop from day one. It'll take 10 days to grow initially, but only three days every harvest after that. You never need to replant it, just water and harvest. The gold per day value you see is only if you plant it on day one. And this is the last crop required for the spring crop bundle. So rice might seem a little odd at first glance. You lose money by planting it. However, the product is unmilled rice. To turn it into actual rice, you'll need a mill on your farm. After milling, it sells for 100 gold instead of 30, increasing your profit to 18.3 gold a day. Note that this number is a little inflated compared to other crops since milled rice can't have any quality other than normal, and you do have to pay the price of building a mill, which is 2,500 gold. Now, what is irrigation? Well, any crop that can be irrigated can be planted within three tiles of water and not need to be watered in addition to having a slightly faster growing cycle. This applies only to rice and one other crop in the entire game. This essentially makes rice a set it and forget it type of crop. So strawberries have the true highest profit per day spring crop, but can only be bought on day 13. If planted on the 13th, you'll have two harvests, and the gold per day will be 11.67, which you'll notice is a mile above the competition. However, if you use speed grow that you obtain as a reward from the spring crops bundle, you'll get another harvest before the end of spring. This will bump your gold per day to 17.3. Most people simply spend the first 12 days making as much money as they can just to spend on these, and for a good reason. Rhubarb are our first crop that's sold in the desert. You probably won't get a chance to plant these until spring of year two, but they carry both the advantage of only needing to be harvested after 13 days, and being the highest gold per day spring crop, not including strawberries, which are still limited to the egg festival even on year two. Garlic is our first year two crop. This shares the short four day growth cycle of the parsnip with a better profit per day. It's also the only way of obtaining the oil of garlic, which is a cooking recipe you receive at level six combat, giving a buff that prevents infested floors, swarms, and in the mines, makes absolutely no enemies spawn. So how was all that? I'm happy to give a little love to the lesser used crops. If you want to use this graph for yourself, I'll have a link in the description to an image that you can save. So on to summer. Important to note, in general, the monetary experience gained from crops increases from spring to summer. So a lot of these are just going to be way better than anything you can get in spring. Right off the bat, blueberries are the best gold per day summer crop that's available from day one. You'll notice that it always produces three berries every time it's harvested. The individual crop's cheapness along with its abundance makes it a great candidate to be used in preserves jars, which always add a base 50 gold to the sell price. It's also required for the summer crops bundle. Corn is special in that it's both a summer crop and a fall crop. The 7.5 gold a day you see is if you plant it on summer day one and leave it until all the way at the end of fall. If you leave it only until the end of summer, that actually goes down to 1.92 gold a day. 
It's not only needed for the fall crops bundle, but five gold star corn is an option in the quality crops bundle. I also want to go over a special quality of multi-season crops. If they're left in over the transition of the season, any fertilizer it was planted on will stay, where normally the fertilizer goes away. Hops is yet another regrowable crop. This one produces every single day after its initial growth, and it has a fairly unique use in kegs. Hops in a keg will produce pale ale, which only takes around a fourth of the time it would take to make wine, and more importantly, sells for 300 gold, which is a 12 times improvement over the base price of hops. This is the second best moneymaker from kegs other than starfruit wine. On top of all that, it gives the best experience per day at 6 experience a harvest or 3.64 a day due to its massive 17 harvests per season. Hot peppers are a very middle ground regrowable crop. They provide an alright gold per day, have the shortest initial grow time, giving a consistent source of gold through the entire season, and they're required for the summer crops bundle. You can treat melons as just a better version of the cauliflower. Extremely long growth time, so not a lot of replanting and picking, and is the second best gold per day in summer of the regular crops. They're required for the summer crops bundle, and five gold stars are an option for the quality crops bundle. These are your best option for your putting in kegs due to them having the largest single sum of gold from a single crop. Poppies give you the best honey in summer, increasing the price to a hefty 380 gold. It also holds the best experience per day of any single harvest summer crop at 2.85 experience a day. Radishes. Uh, this one might be the first one that I'm pulling a blank for. It grows relatively quickly for a slightly below average gold per day. If you have exactly six days left and need something to plant, this'll be your guy. Very situational, though. Summer Spangles are basically a much cheaper alternative to the poppy, costing half of the price, but only increasing the honey price to 280 gold. Unlike the poppy, though, which is a universally hated item, it's liked by everyone except for Clint, George, and Sebastian, and is actually loved by Carolyn. Sunflowers are yet another crop that can last into fall. Obviously, it's not that great for selling, but it has a ton of utilities that make up for that. First of all, when it's harvested, it has a chance to drop anywhere from one to three sunflower seeds, allowing you to replant it for free, and then some. Of course, in this case, you'd be waiting 16 days to turn any amount of profit, so it's still not useful just for money. It can, however, be turned into oil with an oil maker, which increases the price to 100 gold. While it's still not going to turn a profit, it's definitely cheaper than the 200 gold oil is normally sold for in the shop. Finally, as a summer and fall crop, it can preserve your fertilizer over the season transition, and since the only other flower in fall takes a whopping 12 days to grow, it can be pre-grown in summer to increase your honey prices for the first few weeks of fall while you wait for the fairy rose to grow. Tomatoes are a mediocre crop when it comes to money, but it's required for the summer crops bundle, and it's a very common ingredient in cooking recipes required for eight different recipes, including squid ink ravioli, which has a unique buff that makes you completely immune to any debuffs. Wheat is by far the cheapest crop in the entire game, as well as having a quick four day growth cycle makes it all right for a quick buck. Just like rice, it can be placed into a mill to make wheat flour, increasing the sell price to 50 gold, for a 8 gold per day profit. This is also just a cheaper way to get wheat flour, which is normally sold for 100 gold each, as an ingredient that's required for 20 different cooking recipes. It's also a fall crop, and is the cheapest and easiest way to keep your fertilizer from summer to fall. Star fruit is unlocked once you reach the desert. I don't need to tell you how good it is, I'm sure its reputation precedes me. This is one of the best crops in the entire game for making money. Each fruit sells for 750 gold, which is increased to a massive 2,250 gold when made into wine. Unfortunately, you probably won't be able to make use of it in year one due to it being locked in the desert. Now, red cabbage is a crop that was just put into the game to make you hate it. It's unlocked on summer of year one. However, it's required for the dye bundle in the bulletin board. So if you want to get it before year two, the only way to find it is being sold by the wandering trader, or to get it as a drop from serpents, mummies, or purple slimes in the Skull Caverns. It doesn't have much of a use outside of that due to being outclassed by Starfruit in almost every single way. Well, that was a lot. Very appropriately, Summer has a lot more crops than the other seasons. Speaking of, we only have one left. Fall. 
Right off the bat, you'll notice that the crops aren't as good as summers. And the idea here is that you're making up for that with a higher farming level, increased automation with more sprinklers, and maybe even some upgraded tools to make the whole growing process a bit faster and less energy intensive. Let's get into it. Amaranth is a middle of the road gold per day that can be harvested with a scythe. There's a quest that you'll always get on the third day of fall where Marnie requests an amaranth for 500 gold. So really, if you just grow one, you can pretend it's a 71 gold per day crop. Bok Choy is the classic four day grower. Again, it's good for a quick buck, and this one also gives the best experience per day in fall, 14 experience at harvest or 3.5 experience a day. Fairy Roses are the only fall exclusive flower, and it gives the largest possible boost to honey, increasing the price to 680 gold. It's also required in a crafting recipe for an item that instantly makes any machine complete its task. Monetarily, this item is useless, but it does have a few niche uses, and it's nice to just have one around just in case. Pumpkins are the best crop to use if you intend on using kegs, as it sells for the highest amount in just one crop. Same as the cauliflower and melon, it's low effort with a long 13 day growth time. It's also required for the fall foraging bundle, and 5 gold stars is an option for the quality crops bundle. But the other three crops are all cheaper than it, so it's up to you if you'd like to use pumpkins. I consider it more of a backup just in case I didn't get any of the other options. I already went over sunflowers in the summer section, they're practically useless to plant in fall unless you need some cheap oil. They're completely outclassed by the fairy rose in terms of honey. Wheat is pretty much the exact same it was in summer. Yams are pretty much just needed for the fall foraging bundle. They also have a 3% chance to be dropped from Duggies in the mines, so you might not even need to plant one. Any corn you have should have been planted in summer, because they'll yield almost no profit if they're planted now, although they are still needed for the fall crops bundle and the quality crops bundle. Cranberries are your moneymaker of the season. Like blueberries, they're a great option to put in preserves jars since you get multiple every single harvest. Eggplant is the last crop required for the fall foraging bundle. They have great use as an ingredient in survival burgers. The other two ingredients are cave carrots and bread, which can easily be gotten at any time. Their survival burger increases your foraging by three levels. This can make the blackberry bushes yield an extra berry if you pass a level divisible by four, including level 12. I find blackberries to be one of the best energy sources in the entire game. Planting grapes now is a good backup if you forgot to put a grape in the summer foraging bundle. It can also be used to make summer seeds if you have spice berries and sweet peas lying around, which can then be crafted into tea leaf bushes, which sell for a fat 500 gold each. In terms of actual crop uses, it's pretty much outclassed by cranberries. Beets are the fall crop that's locked behind the desert, which you might actually have unlocked by year one fall. Beets main use is to be put into a mill, making three sugar each. This will only increase your profit if you put in a beet that's either silver or normal quality. Gold quality would sell for the same amount, and if you put in an iridium beet, you actually lose money. Sugar, of course, is a very common cooking ingredient, just like wheat flour. Artichokes are the crop that's unlocked in year two. They have much shorter time to grow than pumpkins with a similar amount of gold per day. Most importantly, they can be tailored into my preferred shirt, the button up. Oh boy, that is every single crop in the game. Almost. There's a few special cases that I need to go over really quick. So we'll go in order from the most to least common. Let's start with coffee. These are a spring and summer crop, but they can only be gotten as a random drop from dust sprites or by being sold randomly by the wandering trader. Their most important use is being put in kegs to make coffee. Coffee is the easiest food to obtain that gives a speed buff, and almost everyone worth their salt keeps a stack of these in their inventory at all times. Next, the sweet gem berry. The seed for these can only be sold by the traveling cart, and it costs 1,000 gold. It has a huge growth time of 24 days and then sells for 3,000 gold. However, it's needed for a star drop by being given to this statue in the secret woods. Feel free to buy it every time it comes up in the shop. It's a pretty long investment, but it gives a ton of money back. Note that the sweet gem berry itself cannot be put into a keg. However, it can be put into a seed maker. Not that you'd have much of a reason to do so because you'd have to wait an entire year to plant it again. For the last of the base game crops, we have ancient fruit. This is technically the best crop in the game, just with a lot of specific drawbacks. For one, the seeds aren't sold anywhere. You either need to get them as a random drop from enemies, or put an ancient fruit that you've already grown into the seed maker. There's also a very low chance of just randomly getting them from any other crop that you put into the seed maker. 
Then, even though they are regrowable, they take 28 days to grow. So the only way you're going to make use of the regrow is if you put them in an area where the season doesn't matter, like the greenhouse. From there, you're going to have to slowly fill up the greenhouse with more ancient fruit whenever you get them. And this takes a very long time for it to start really filling up. The reason these outclass starfruit is due to them being regrowable and not having to pay for seeds. So if you're looking for money over a very long period of time, this is ideal. Otherwise, you're better off just using starfruit. Note that this next section will include spoilers for version 1.5 exclusive crops. First, taro roots. This is the only other crop other than rice that can be irrigated. As I said before, this means no watering and it grows in 7 days instead of 10. Each taro root, which is the product of taro tubers, will sell for 100 gold, coming out to a 14.25 gold per day, which is pretty hefty, especially considering it's just a leave it and forget it kind of crop like rice is. It's also used as a currency itself at the island trader, for items like farm warp totems and the luau skirt. Last but not least, pineapples. I like to see these as less profitable but easier to set up ancient fruit. The seeds aren't viable, but they can be traded for magma caps at the island trader, and drop from hotheads and tiger slimes. They take two weeks to grow and will produce again every week after that. At first glance, it seems pretty great, but remember that fertilizer does not apply to them. That, and due to starfruit having a larger cost per fruit, make them more efficient when it comes to wines. Pineapples are definitely in the top five though. And that is truly every crop in the game. Except for keep crop, but I've already gone over that. Of course, crops aren't the only part of the farming stat, as animals actually contribute to it as well, and a lot of them have multiple uses that you may or may not have known about. But that is for another time. Thank you for watching. Once again, if anything here helped you, please let me know, and if there's anything that you would like more information on, please tell me. I'm happy to make content that someone specifically needs. See y'all next time, and goodbye.